Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast for our final segment of the day where we are going to be previewing the upcoming season for the New York Giants. The Giants obviously disappointing step backwards last season following their playoff win in 2023. So they definitely feel like they could bounce back to some degree, but I think that the anomaly was more so 2022 being as good as it was versus 2023 being a down year. And there's been a lot of talk about Brian Dayball and whether or not he's on the hot seat. I think it's ridiculous and I feel like most people that are watching this team are sort of on board with that as well. But I've seen enough articles about hot seat coaches, NFL coaches on the hot seat for 2024 that have included Brian Dable at the top of the list that it is at least somewhat of a storyline. And I don't think that Brian Dable should be judged off of how good he was in 2022. That that was unrealistic expectations a little bit, but the Giants are trying to build something and it's a little bit difficult when there's clearly not all that much trust at the quarterback position where Brian Dable, it's, it's so interesting to me because I say there isn't a lot of trust, but that being said, the front office decided to sign Daniel Jones to a contract extension following that year, despite the fact that it was kind of clear to me that Brian Dable understood the limitations with Daniel Jones and that, you know, Jones only threw for 15 touchdowns in that season as a whole. And he was able to play the role they were asking him to, which was be a little bit more of a manager. He used his legs more than he ever really has in the past as well. So I think that, you know, Daniel Jones, I definitely, I've never been a fan of his, but now to also say he's a bottom five quarterback in the NFL, I mean, to be honest, like it's not, I guess it's really not that unrealistic, but I do think that there's some, you know, thought at least that at least for this season, the Giants' number one issue is not going to be Daniel Jones in that quarterback position. Now, it's still very much possible that if the Giants have a down year this season and they're sitting at the top of the draft next year, it's not a particularly strikingly strong quarterback class, at least you know, saying this in August, we still have a full season to go here, but you know, it's definitely possible they make a change at the quarterback position, but it's not just all on Daniel Jones. You look at the talent on the roster and it only gets worse considering the fact that Saquon Barkley left in free agency this year. Yet again, a little bit of a situation where I didn't hate the Daniel Jones deal when it was done immediately at the time considering I do believe that the Giants have an out in the contract after this season, which I can double check here quickly, but there is going to be a dead cap hit for them if they end up releasing him, but they have an out and the the $41 million cap hit, $58 million cap hit in 2026, I would probably bet that that isn't going to be something that we see, that the Giants are going to make a move there and reset there a little bit. But to do that and let Saquon Barkley, who is just such a massive part of that offensive scheme, you got a healthy year from Barkley in 2022. And that's the reason why Daniel Jones was able to be a little bit more of a manager was because the offense was built around Saquon Barkley and he was just so effective for them. But Barkley's gone. The offensive line is very clearly still an issue. Now, they made a couple moves this offseason to try and improve it, at least some. They signed a couple offensive linemen in Jermaine Illuminor and Aaron Stenny, and both of them appear to be starters in the first unofficial depth chart that the Giants just released on their own website. You can check that out for a more now, extended look there, but Dan Solom- Solomon, um, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it there, but 
he just sort of wrote an article and posted the depth chart on giants.com so you can check it out there but it looks like Illuminor and Stenny are going to be the right tackle and right guard respectively as things currently stand it's still not a good group it's still probably going to be a bad group so again that's where I sort of make the point of I understand that Daniel Jones does leave a lot to be desired but I don't think that you know, upgrading from Daniel Jones was the number one need for them. You're going to go up and draft a quarterback to probably have him sit because I wouldn't want to throw him, throw him out there behind that offensive line. So it's just, it's going to be a little bit of a rebuilding process for the Giants and maybe it won't take all that long, but definitely still a lot of room to grow. Malik Neighbors is obviously a very key ad easily the best wide receiver that Daniel Jones has had as a weapon since he was drafted to the Giants so we'll see there how all of that plays out but still not a particularly inspiring skill position group either where Devin Singletary and Tyrone Tracy Jr. your top two running backs receivers outside of Malik neighbors Wandale Robinson is a good player I like Darius Slayton maybe we see Jalen Hyatt take a step forward he was electric in college so you feel like if but like Hyatt even too I feel like when he ultimately succeeds if he does it's going to be in an offense that can have a little bit more of a slower developing play take place and I just don't know if the Giants offensive line is even going to allow that to happen this upcoming season but the Giants their defense is where I'm a little bit more intrigued they of course add Brian Burns in a trade this offseason which included a second round pick so you know definitely paid the price for Brian Burns made him one of the highest paid defenders in the NFL but he is a very good player he is going to match up alongside Kayvon Thibodeau in what can be a pretty elite pass rush and I do really like the front seven for the for the Giants like I mentioned Burns and Thibodeau as you know edge rushers you have Dexter Lawrence in the middle at that nose tackle position to be able to help stop the run Aziz Ojolari is a pretty solid linebacker as well to pair up with Bobby Okereke and Micah McFadden I think that Okereke has been underrated from years and McFadden is somebody that I wasn't even really aware of until last season but he just continued to impress me so I do like their linebackers. You throw in there the fact that they bought low on Isaiah Simmons, who is still, what, just three, four years into his NFL career, could provide you different looks if I'm going to make any one comparison. I mean, we did see Jabril Peppers sort of play a similar role where he was struggling a little bit to find his exact place on a defense, but once he got to the right place with the Patriots, Peppers beca became a very positive impact player. So I'm looking at that front seven, and I do think there's a lot to like there. The issue is the secondary is a little bit of a mess. Now, first, one nice thing I'll throw out there is that Deontay Banks was pretty good and showed some real promise in his rookie season from an outside corner and I think that he is somebody that the Giants should feel good about that they went out and they got last year. The issue is outside of that, there is pretty much no proven and not a lot of high-end ceiling, I don't think, outside of Banks, where Jason Pinnock is a fine option for them at safety. Now they just drafted Tyler Newbin in the second round out of Minnesota. Maybe he emerges and begin, starts playing big minutes for them. I think as things currently stand though, Newbin is projected to be a backup. So we'll see how much playing time he actually even gets for the for the Giants this season, I just think that it's going to be definitely a work in progress in that secondary. Um, Cordell Flott, again, like he's a fine option, but you don't have any veteran experience. And again, outside of Deontay Banks, it's not like there's a ton of, you know, blue chip 
high draft po prospect pedigree that you can talk yourself into. Now, who knows? Maybe I'll be wrong eventually there. But I think that, again, this is going to be a season where the Giants are just going to try and at least have the vision intact. Looking at their schedule, I think it's pretty difficult. Um, Sharp Football Analysis had them with the 22nd easiest, which would be something a lot, or, or along the lines of, what, 11th hardest, something like that. Um, but I do think that there are a lot of difficult matchups for them, especially when you are looking at, I'd say probably, especially that middle of the season stretch where you are on the road in Cleveland week three, and I don't think that outside of a Commanders game and a Panthers game, that there are all that many games that you can just guarantee for a win. Now, home games against the Vikings, Commanders, Panthers, you can definitely get a little bit more excited about. Maybe you throw Tampa Bay in that conversation as well, even though I think that they are a class above the Giants. And I do think that Brian Dable is a good coach. So ultimately, I think that he's going to, as long as the team is healthy, and that's the thing is last year when you're looking at, you come into the season with Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor is a fine backup quarterback, but obviously he's plan B. I think that Dable is a very good offensive mind. Like I talked about, I think that there is a lot of promise with that front seven on the defensive side of the ball. So ultimately I have the giants going five and 12, which as long as again, the vision is intact. I don't think that Brian Dable should be held to the expectations of, well, you won a, a playoff game just a couple of years ago. What happened? Are you the problem? I don't think that's the case. There are a lot of holes on this Giants roster, but specifically I'm looking at that offensive line and the secondary. Those are areas that the Giants absolutely need to improve on over the course of these next few seasons. And I do think that they can sort of, well, and of course the quarterback position as well. So I don't know, maybe I'm trying to talk myself into the Giants more than I actually fully am ready to get into, but I, I think that between having Dable and having some young players that you can get excited about, Giants maybe are looking at, you know, a year or two from now, working their way back into playoff contention. I just hope that they don't jump the gun on trying to make a move with Brian Dable because they are expecting more. I think that you have to evaluate the current situation of the roster and understand there are other things at play, but... Looking at how this compares to the rest of the NFL, Giants are going to be in con in contention for that number one overall pick next year, I think. I wouldn't probably project them to be there. Again, I think that they might actually you know, surprise a little bit and be not quite as bad as some of the most glaring holes of the roster may lead you to believe. But they are still not going to be a playoff team next year. And we're, it's going to be a little bit until they work their way back into that conversation. I am very fascinated, though, to see how this plays out with Daniel Jones and whether or not it's something that the front office is going to decide to punt on after this year, considering they do have that potential out after this season. But let me know how what your expectations are for the Giants are this season. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you very much for tuning into the GSMC Sports Podcast. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. Remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever you keep up with us. Be sure to check us out on social media as well for more exclusive short content. And we will be back tomorrow afternoon, same time as always, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern. We will see you then. Take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go.